Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a speculation I like for the long term. This is a card that is not going to dominate standard anytime soon. It has seen play as a one of or a two of, but it does have modern as well as legacy slash vintage playability, and that's what I look for. I don't look for cards when I want to pick something up in standard and a few dozen, hundred copies of it. I look for when a card that I can keep continue to pick up for a relatively cheap price and after it rotates I can pick it up even more. And that is Thalia. So we are looking at the prices. Sees anywhere between $1.50 all the way up to $2, $2.65. So let's say from $1.50 to $3 is what you should be buying her at. And my local game store sells play sets of her at $6 or $7. So it's a good price to pick her up. She is very common. Eldritch Moon did get opened up a bunch, just like every single modern set. However, I like the card a lot, and I'm going to go into detail about how I come to this conclusion. So you don't need to buy Falia, but you at least understand the logic, or I go over the logic of why I like her so much. Now, like I said, she is in one standard deck, but she's in two vintage decks, Aldrazi and Hate Bears. So those are two different decks. And that's why I look for in a card that's being played in Eternal. Now, Vintage isn't my favorite format, and it's not a format I play, nor is it a format that has that much MTG Finance relevance. But the fact that she is good in Vintage tells me the power level is there. And whenever I look at a card like Snapcast Mage or Tamagoyf, Tamagoyf is the best example of a card that could get stronger, and it did. And that's why it's a hundred dollars, still a hundred dollar card today. Now, when I look at Legacy, it's in two death and taxes. So that's interesting. It's being it's seeing some play in Legacy. Legacy is probably more played in vintage, I assume, and this is the downward spiral. Now in modern, it's in three decks: Adrazi, White Weenie, and Bant. None of these are particularly tier one decks, but it's nice that it has variety. It's not solely constricted to one deck. And its price graph, it's at the near it's at the lowest point it can possibly be at soon. I mean a dollar forty nine for a near mint version is very good. You can find it on eBay for seven, eight dollars a playset now quite easily. And your store should probably be selling her for three dollars at most overall it is a powerful card it's a little too expensive for my taste like i wish it still cost two and they just made it a little weaker even if it was like a one two first strike and it cost two i think that would have been the ideal card but it's good it's a very strong card and original filia has done exceedingly well for me uh, obviously, if you follow this channel, you know that I love original Philia. And that was one of the cards I picked up a ton of in foil. That was a lot of the cards I picked up a ton of in foil cream. And the price of those have skyrocketed to... The one thing I will note, that there is a promo. So when it means media promo, it's like $3.58. That's the buy a box promo. Now, buy a box promo reminds me a lot of vanilla card, Restoration Angel. So this might go the way of Restoration Angel, except Restoration Angel was one of the best cards in Standard at the time. Definitely with that little uh, frag tusk creature. And that's this is not Falia. Falia is not a good card in Standard. So you're seeing some play in Mardu vehicles. She so does get into the vehicle well. Her sizable body with other effects. But... Overall, I like the card long term. It's not going to be a short term play. And a long, this type of play is very good. It's much more up my alley because I can continue to buy them. And when she rotates out, that's when it will hit rock bottom. That's where I expect these to be under a dollar. And if they are under a dollar, then I'll just continue to buy them. But for a dollar fifty, and that's not a bad price. That is really not a bad price to get in on this card. And what's the worst case that can happen? Like, so it goes down to a dollar, you lose 50 cents. Anyway, I like Filia. I've always loved Filia. I mean, there's no other card I love more uh, from a collector's standpoint. It's 
my namesake card, right? I mean, everything on his channel, you look at the, it's, it's file layers everywhere. So this one makes a lot of sense and it might not make sense for you, but this is a logic that I'm looking at. I'm looking at diversity of format, eternal format. I really could care less about standard because cards that were good in standard are not good in modern. They're not good in legacy and they're not good in vintage. 95% of them won't see any play in those formats. So your card value is deteriorating even as we speak now. Now, Filea gives a very interesting, it's probably a three to five year window where I expect her price to be at least $10 at some point, just like the original Filea. She was a one to $2 card, and then now she hit her price spike at $10. And I don't believe she's done yet. I believe there will be a second price spike eventually because she's that good. This one is very similar. I mean, they cost one more, but the power level is there and I do like it. So that's one of my favorite speculations of 2017, but it will take a few years for it to really reach the level that the original file had reached was 10 plus dollars. But I know my in my gut, this is one of the cards I look at and I say, Vintage power, check. Multiple diverse decks and modern vintage and legacy. Well, not legacy. Modern vintage, check. That's all I need to see. That tells me its power level is up there. And should something change in the future, should the meta change in the future, which it will, she could fall into the meta. And then her price, just like Malera, just like regular Falia, will be much more expensive. Anyway, bye guys. Mm -hmm.